Hello everyone and welcome to my Autodesk Advanced Steel tutorial. In today's Autodesk Advanced Steel tutorial, I'll be showing you how to draw in this portal frame. But I will split up this portal frame tutorial into several parts. So the first part will be showing you how to model in the members of the portal frame and how to model a slab and a pad footing for your columns over here and the second part would be about steel connections for example like this apex haunch how to draw them in and so on and the third part would be how to draw in a purlin system and roof and the fourth part would be how to clad the sides of your portal frame so without further ado let's get started so when you first start out drawing in advanced steel you'll see this country settings and configurations pop up here unless you've checked on don't show this again on startup and okay this will pop up continuously so right now i'm currently using the international content over here from my experience i've only used the uk and international and what i can say is that the uk country settings and configurations uh, missing certain things like uh, use haunch that I will get into in the next tutorial video on steel connections. So just leave it as international and click on OK. And click on new over here to start a new advanced steel file. Okay, so now that the new file has started. First things first, before we draw in any of our portal frames or any steel structure or any structure in general, we must have a structural grid. So right now we are in the home tab and we can actually draw in our structural grid. In this software, it's called a building grid. So click on building grid. So right now you can see that we have engaged the building grid function. And now we must set the starting point for our building grid itself so key in 0 comma 0 so that it will start at the origin point and now let us set out the building grid itself so for this case the building dimension would be 20 by 40 meters so I'll key in 20,000 by 40,000 uh, one thing I forgot to mention from earlier is to check the drawing units. So to the top left over here, click on options and go to user preferences over here. So check on the units here and make sure they are millimeters or meters, whichever you choose and click on OK. So this is our building grid over here. So if you'd like to change the building grid settings, you can just double click on any one of them. So if you double click on the ones going from bottom to top, you can alter all of the ones that are going from bottom to top. So you can choose a framing, for example, for the naming of the grid lines. And you can either have numbers or small letters here or capital letters here. So that's one thing to note. In this case, I would like the x-axis to be numbers and the y-axis to be alphabets. Moving on to the group tab. So this is where we can see the spacing of each of the grid lines. So right now it is set to a recurring 6 over here, which is not what I want. So I'll just increase the number of grid lines to 5. That way, the distance between each grid line is a constant 5 meters. And there's nothing much for me to do here at all in the single axis. For display type, if you click on off, again, you'll have no grid line. Standard means that if I were to select one of these here, I can move all of them at the same time, for example. So if I double click again, and choose single axis if i select one of these grids and move one essentially i can only move 
one grid at a time with the single axis display type. And for grid projection, I will use the project grid vertically for model views and drawings. So I'll just quickly go through the settings for the other set of grid lines. Again, I'll be using five grid lines so that we won't have a recurring number for our distance. Again, nothing to change in single axis and I'll keep it as standard here. And grid projection is left as checked. So now I'll just quickly space this out by 2000. Whoops, I forgot to change it to standard over here. So I'll just set it out as 2000 here. So now let us focus on drawing in our portal frame. So go to the extended modeling tab and at the left over here you can see portal slash gabble frame. So click on it once and you can see that we've engaged the portal slash gabble frame drawing tool. So we must first select the base point for the first column. So I want to use the origin as the base point. So Again, Advanced Steel behaves similarly to AutoCAD. So from this edge over here, move inwards until you get this X over here. So that is now the base point for our portal frame over here. And the base point for the second column would be over here. And now you can either key in the apex height or the angle. So I'll select the angle over here. And I'll just key in 10 degrees. And when you hit enter, this advanced steel portal frame window will emerge. So right now we are using a portal frame type. And you can actually name it. But in this case, I'm not going to name it over here. The most important settings would be the set out and sections over here. And to a lesser degree, position of frame. So now let's go through all the settings in the set out. So again, I'd like a symmetrical roof. So that the dimensions for the rafters are exactly the same in terms of the length of the rafters so right now the span of the frame is 20 meters which is correct the total height over here which is measured from the base of the column to the top of the apex over here is 6.7 meters i've already checked with the calculation so it's correct and the eaves level one which is the height of the column is 5 meters which is correct for this case and type of angle is degrees so the roof slope is 10 degrees which is correct as we've said before and the level of the base plate is at 0 meters over here so that means we have no offset for our column so going on to the sections tab so for this video I'll be using the columns are equal setting over here if you need to use different size columns you can uncheck this setting but for this case i'll leave it as checked over here and i will use a universal column so scroll down find uk universal column and let me just pick a random uc member let's say uc 254 by 254 uh, let's say this one over here and for the rafter size I'll use a UK beam universal beam and let's say I want 305 by 165 by 54 and you can actually have additional projections over here so projection 1 is on the left projection 2 is on the right so I can extend it out by let's say 2 meters for example on the left and 2 meters on the right so that's an important setting for extending the rafter beyond the column moving on to the position of frame tab here so let us okay so let us just click on X for now let me just 
change the view to conceptual and let us double click on this portal frame again and choose the position of frame tab again so if you use the middle position for both of these settings here the column will be placed at the middle of the grid intersections so right now we can move the position to the left so that means the portal frame will be to the left of grid A if we choose right it would be on the right hand side of grid A for this case I'll be using a middle and for the inner position if we choose top it will be placed over here slightly below grid 1 if you choose bottom it will be slightly above grid 1 so in a scenario where your building grid is the allowable building space for example you can set position to left and inner position to bottom so that your column will be located inside the building grid but of course you need to get rid of these additional projections here so that's one thing to note in this case I'll just leave it as middle for both and that's it so before we copy out the portal frame to all the other grid lines over here one thing that I would like to show you is that you can actually change the material over here from S355 to S275 for example and for this video I'll be using a S275 yield strength over here so I'll select S275 for all rafters and columns so S275 like so so now let us copy out this portal frame to all the other grid lines so moving on to the tools tab over here you can find the advanced copy tool so select this portal frame click on advanced copy and since we want this portal frame to be copied out to grid lines B, C, D and E so the Y spacing would be 10 meters here and we want one two three four copies and click on ok and there we go we've already copied out the portal frame to grids b to e and now i will show you how to draw in the beams from one column over here to the next so go back to the home tab and click on the roll eye section drop down you can see that there are many different types of beams that we can use but for this case I'll be using a rolled eye section and let us draw from the middle of this column to the middle of this column over here like so and hit escape twice and let us change the section over here from a HGA section to UK universal beam so we'll be using the same dimension as the one used for our rafter so it's 305 by 165 by 54 like so and for positioning for this case we want to shift it downwards along the Z axis so let's try minus 200 first so there doesn't seem to be any clash over here so we'll just keep it at minus 200 over here and I'll click on X over here and let me just quickly copy this elsewhere so I'll select this and use advanced copy again and click on OK whoops uh, we have one extra here so just delete that and now let us copy this using the regular copy tool from the middle of this column here to the middle of this column over here like so 
and hit escape twice. So this is our portal frame over here. So now I'll show you how to draw in your slab for this portal frame. So you can go to the objects tab and there's a isolated footing over here and a rectangular slab. So I will show you how to draw both. So click on rectangular slab. So after selecting the rectangular slab button over there, you can either start your slab from the middle of this column here, or you could start the slab from where this column ends over here. So I'll start it from over here to the end over here. So let's say I want to change it to 22 meters over here. Whoops. And 42 meters here. So the slab extends out 1 meter on each side over here. And you can change the thickness of your slab. Right now I'll just keep it at 200 millimeters of thickness. And I'll just use a C25-30 grade of concrete and click on X. And now I'll show you how to use the isolated footing tool. So for example, I have a column base over here. I just need to select it like so. And there you go. That is the column isolated footing. And that's it for today's Autodesk Advanced Steel tutorial. If you found this tutorial useful, like this video and share this video with anyone who can benefit from it. And subscribe if you want more Autodesk Revit and Autodesk Advanced Steel tutorials. In the next Advanced Steel tutorial, I'll be showing you how to draw in steel connections for your portal frame. And for the third Autodesk Advanced steel tutorial i'll be showing you how to draw in purlins for your roof and the roof itself and the fourth video of my portal frame tutorial series in advanced steel would be showing you how to clad the sides of the portal frame so stay tuned for that and thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe keep learning stay safe and goodbye